Hi everyone, it's Michael. So I promised you all I'd do a video on poles and polars. And not only am I going to give you one video, I'm going to give you two videos. Uh, so this first video is going to cover the more basic theorems. And then the next one is going to cover the more advanced theorems. But even these basic theorems can be incredibly powerful. Um, I think in all the Olympiad problems I've solved previously on my channel, uh, whenever I've used poles and polars, all but one time it was um, the more basic theorem. So, so I think it was only in one video where I used uh, one of the more advanced theorems that I'm going to do in my second video. Um, so even just, just learning the, um, the theorems in this video alone uh, will help you a lot in solving Olympiad problems. Um, and what's really interesting is um, as powerful as this theory is, the proofs are actually fairly simple. Uh, so if you haven't seen this before, I, I'd encourage you to try to uh, prove all the theorems that I go through in this video. All right. So first I'm going to define what the polar of a point is. Um, so I've written the formal definition up here, uh, so you can read that if you like. Um, but I'm going to show you just using the picture sort of what the definition is. Uh, so here we have a circle of radius 6, and we have a point B that's a distance 4 from the center. So what is the polar of point B? And it turns out the, the, def, the polar is this line right here, um, line little b. Um, and, and the line little b, it's a distance of 9 from O. Um, and it's perpendicular to OB. And 9 times 4 is 36, which is the radius squared. So that's how we define the polar line. It's the line which is perpendicular to OB, and so that when you multiply the distance from that line to O times the distance from B to O, you get the radius squared. Okay? Uh, so in this case, B was inside the circle and the polar line was, is outside the circle, but the reverse can happen. So let's say C is a point that's outside of a, the circle and it's a distance of 12 uh, from the center. Uh, the polar line, again, it would be a line that's perpendicular to OC. And so that when you take the distance from that line to O times the distance from C to O, you get 36 which is the radius squared. So 12 times 3 is 36. Uh, that's the radius squared. And so therefore, this, this line here, which is perpendicular to OC, uh, that's the polar of point C. OK? So it's not too clear just from the definition why we would be so interested in poles and polars. Um, but once you see the theorems uh, that come up um, later in this video and in my next video, um, it'll be pretty clear why this is a very powerful tool worth learning. All right. Uh, so now I'm going to go on to the first important theorem of poles and polars. Uh, this is called Lahiris theorem, and it's very, very simple to state. Uh, suppose that point P lies on the polar of Q, then Q lies on the polar of P. So like I just said, this is Lahir's theorem. Uh, very simple and very useful. Uh, this alone is enough to, to help um, either solve or simplify a lot of Olympiad geometry problems. Okay, so I am going to uh, show a proof of it here. Um, and if you'd like to try to solve it, feel free to pause the video. Um, so we have a point Q. And now I'm going to draw the polar of point Q. Um, so this line is the polar of point Q. And I'm going to let P be a point on it. So I'm going to rename this point P. So if P lies on the polar of Q, then we want to show that Q lies on the polar of P. All right. So uh, first, we want to unravel the definition. So we know that P lies on the polar of Q. So if this line is the polar line of Q, then if we draw OQ, it has to be perpendicular. So I'm going to let OQ intersect, um, intersect the, the polar at A. So OQ is perpendicular to PA. Okay. 
but then we want to show that that um, Q is on the polar of P. So the polar of P, that would be a line, first of all, it has to be perpendicular to OP. So I'm gonna drop a perpendicular from Q to OP, and I'm gonna let B be the foot of that perpendicular. And then we want to show that Q lies on the polar of P, which is the same as showing that OB times OP is the radius squared, okay? And we know that OQ times OA is the radius squared um, because we know this line is the polar of Q. And it turns out that uh, once we know that, it's not hard to show. So all it is is using power of a point. So we know that angle QAP is 90 degrees, and we know that angle QBP is 90 degrees. Um, so I'm going to write that out. So QAPB has to be a cyclic quadrilateral, okay? Um, this should really be QAPB. Um, but once we know that that's a cyclic quadrilateral, power of a point already finishes it off. Uh, so like I mentioned, these are not long proofs. Um, by power of a point, we would have OB times OP is equal to OQ times OA. And then by definition of polar, this is equal to the radius squared. Okay, and then since, so since OB times OP is equal to the radius squared and QB is perpendicular to OP, we, we defined it that way because we dropped a perpendicular, uh, then the line BQ has to be by definition the polar of point P. And if line BQ is the polar of point P, then Q uh, clearly lies on the polar of P. So very short proof. But even this very simple theorem can be very powerful. All right, so now I'm going to get into the second theorem in the video. Okay, suppose the polars of P and Q intersect at R, then prove that PQ is the polar of R. So this, uh, if you'd like to try to solve it, feel free to pause the video. Um, all right. But it's a very simple consequence of Lahira's theorem. So sometimes it's considered like a part of it. Okay, so we have two points P and Q, and now I'm going to draw their two polars and I'm going to let it intersect at point R. And we want to show that the line PQ is the polar of R. Okay, this is going to be a very short proof that's just a very simple application of Lahira's theorem. Okay, so. If R is the intersection of the two polars, uh, first we know that R lies on the polar of P, okay? So by Lahira's theorem, P has to lie on the polar of R. And then we can do the exact same thing with point Q. So Q lies on the polar of R, so, or, or I should say R lies on the polar of Q, and so Q has to lie on the polar of R, again by Lahira's theorem. And then if both P and Q lie on the polar of R, then, well, there's only one line through two points. So the polar of R has to be the line through P and Q. And so the line PQ is the polar of R. So even shorter than the last proof. Um, and here I use GeoGebra's um, pole and polar tool to find the polar of R. And it just so happened that it does pass through P and Q. So I did not draw the line through P and Q using GeoGebra. I drew uh, the polar of point R with respect to the circle, and it happened to pass through P and Q. All right, so that's the second basic theorem. And now I am going to go over the third basic theorem. Okay, so we have a point P outside of the circle omega. Uh, the tangents from P meet the circle at points A and B, and we want to show that the line AB is the polar of point P, okay? So just seeing these three theorems, you, you could probably already be very convinced that this concept of polar is very valuable, okay? So how do we show AB is the polar of point P? Well, first we'd have to show that AB is perpendicular to OP, but that's very clear by symmetry um, because the two tangents from P to the circle um, by symmetry have to be symmetric with respect to OP, okay? 
So I'm going to draw in a few more lines here. I'm going to let C be the intersection of OP and AB. And it's very clear by symmetry that OP is perpendicular to AB. So that's the first condition of the polar line. Okay. The second condition is we have to show that OC times OP is the radius squared. And some of you might just recognize it from this figure, but um, we have two similar right triangles. So uh, angle OCA is 90 degrees and angle OAP is 90 degrees. Uh, so I'm gonna write that out. So if both of those are true, then triangle OAC has to be similar to triangle OAP because they both share a common angle besides the right angle. So this angle AOC, um, it's shared by both of those two triangles. So triangle OAP is similar to triangle OCA. All right. And then from there, the ratios of corresponding sides have to be equal. Uh, so OA over OC, so that's the longer of the legs in those two right triangles. And the ratio of them, um, actually, I, I wrote it slightly differently. So OA over OP, that's the ratio of the longer leg to the hypotenuse of the first triangle. And that has to equal OC over OA. So if you rewrite that, we get OP times OC is OA squared. Um, and OA is the radius of the circle. So if we call it R, that's just the radius squared. And so now we've proven exactly what we need for AB to be the polar P, because AB is perpendicular to OP, and OC times OP is R squared. So by definition, AB is the polar P. So just this video alone, like I mentioned, is very, is very useful in solving uh, geometry problems. But the next video I'm gonna show has some fancier theorems, uh, which can also be incredibly useful. Uh, so I hope you check that out too. Uh, so if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more like this, feel free to subscribe to my channel. Thanks everyone.